takes a few seconds to start recording. There we go. Okay. So, in the dichotomous search method, um, the nice thing about it is that by choosing three points, D, C, and E, uh, within the interval A to B, if I equally space them within the center of this interval, uh, then I get to halve uh, the search interval each time. So depending on which is the smallest out of f of d, f of c, f of, and f of e, depending on who, uh, at which point is the lowest, then that makes uh, the interval, uh, the search interval for the minimum be a to c, d to e, uh, or c to b, a not b not. And so you can halve the surf in, uh, interval each time. Uh, and, this is the, and this is essentially the algorithm for that. So this is what that algorithm would look like uh, as a piece of pseudocode. And so a good exercise for you to do is to take your favorite um, programming language, uh, MATLAB, Python, R, um, Julia, C++, whatever you want, uh, code this up, and you can have a, a dichotomous search algorithm. I won't talk about this uh, in great detail. Uh, you can read through this yourself. It's in the notes. Um, essentially, what, your, uh, what this uh, algorithm does is it evaluates, it takes in an, in, uh, an input interval, A0 to B0, uh, and, you know, and, and some uh, L, L, so the maximum size of the final interval that you want to have. Um, and what it does is it evaluates, it finds three interior points, C, D, and E. It evaluates the function at each of those. And then all of these if statements are just essentially checking which is the smallest uh, of those three points and refining the search interval. So refining what A and B are, what the endpoints of that interval are accordingly. And after N iterations, um, uh, this thing terminates and it's guaranteed had to be um, less than, uh, uh, to be of width less than L. So that's the algorithm. Um, and then the big question here, and the spot where we can actually do a tiny little bit of maths, our first bit of maths, um, really for this course, is we can ask the question, what is N? Right? So how many times does this algorithm uh, have to search? So with the idea, so given that I start with some interval A0 to B0, so there's some interval um, of some width uh, and some final size, I want to demand uh, that, the, um, uh, that the minimum uh, ends up inside some smaller interval L, uh, how many steps does this algorithm run, right? Because remember, the, um, uh, when I look for the efficiency of an algorithm, the big thing that I want to check uh, is how many times do I have to uh, evaluate this function? So how many times do I have to calculate these FC, FD, and FE? So every time I loop through this, um, I need to calculate FC, FD, and F3, FE. I need to do three evaluations. So if I know how many times I loop through, uh, then I know how many uh, function evaluations have been done. I know how efficient the algorithm is. So, okay, so let's let, um, let's just write out what the error uh, in this algorithm, uh, in the algorithm is. So eventually, uh, x star is going to lie in the interval a n to b n after n intervals. Uh, and so, if I assume, and this is an assumption, so if f, uh, at worst, if x is in the middle of that interval, a n plus b n over 2, if it's in the middle, uh, the error uh, the error is going to be less than or equal to l over 2. So that's something I can say straight away. Um, you know, each, I also know that each step, each iteration, uh, the interval, the bracketing interval gets halved. So after n iterations, I have the length of the interval, ln, 
that's going to be bn take away an, right? So the um, uh, the two coordinates uh, of the um, uh, of the of the final two endpoints of the interval. Uh, and what is that? Well, that's the um, you know it halves each time, right? So if I've done n iterations and my interval l, um, the, the width of my interval exactly halves each time, then this is um, uh, then I get two to the power of n um, divisions of the interval each time. So we need to um, use this to uh, calculate uh, calculate n. Um, uh, we, so we want here, uh, we want this bn minus an, we want this uh, ln uh, to be less than or equal um, to this uh, maximum width l. Right? I've got this tolerance of error, um, so a width of my final interval which I want to be no more than l. So that means that I need to have b naught take away a naught over 2 to the power of n it's got to be less than or equal to L, right? And essentially, I want to just solve this for, uh, for N. So let's make N the subject. So B naught take away A naught over L. Uh, it's got to be less than 2 to the power of N. And now I can just take logs of both sides. I'll even take log to the base 2 uh, of both sides. Um, so, you know, uh, taking logs of both, log to the base 2 of both sides, I'm going to get that N uh, is less than or equal to log to the base 2 uh, of that left-hand side. So B0 take away A0 uh, all over L. So the number of iterations that I have to do to guarantee that my final interval uh, is no larger uh, than this magical value L uh, has got to be that there. And that's just a, that's just a pretty straightforward uh, calculation. So, you know, n has to be an integer, right, because I'm counting the number of loops, uh, the number of iterations uh, through a for loop here, or through a while loop, as it was written on that pseudocode. So n is going to be equal to uh, the ceiling. So basically, you know, that'll uh, tend to be um, something with some stupid number of decimal places, uh, that, uh, that object. Uh, and so n is going to be the ceiling. We'll round that up to the nearest integer. So just to basically for the sake of putting in a little bit of extra notation, you know, the ceiling function is going to be that. So rounding up to the nearest integer um, is going to be that. So you know, to come back to the to come back to the slide, an algorithm like this, this is the first example that we have of taking an algorithm like this that's written in pseudocode a piece of computer code, an algorithm, uh, and calculating something about it, um, something about how efficient it is um, using mathematics. So that's the, it's that sort of analysis uh, of an algorithm like this uh, that we're going to do throughout the course. So we can place bounds uh, again and again on how efficient each of these algorithms are. It's a sort of an overriding uh, concept in the course. Um, yeah, we can do that. Uh, we can do that using mathematics. Uh, so I'll stop there. Ten minutes, 401.